If you are a Tomb Kings player, you have come to the right place. On this video, I'm going to show you how to paint your mummies in a fast and easy way, emulating the techniques that we had in the 90s, but making your miniatures look perfectly fine for today's tabletops. So buckle up brush liquors because it's going to be a wild ride. What do I mean by a classic paint job? Well, I'm going to use miniatures back from the 90s, before the undead became both the vampire counts and the tomb kings. So you're gonna see a few chunky boys, but all the techniques that we're gonna use you can translate to your tomb kings, no problem. Secondly, the paint jobs that we're gonna be doing today are based on this guide. If you have watched my videos, you know who I'm trying to emulate here, none other than our saint and savior, Mr. Mike McVeigh. Let's get started. And we're gonna find how to do mummies on this one. It's on page 60. All right, here we go. Right here, we have a small snippet on how to paint mummies according to Mike McVeigh. We're going to be using a black undercoat and then we're going to use highlights on white. As you can see, he's using this combination of blue and red. The flesh is somewhat greenish. We're gonna try to achieve that. And most of the surface is the bandages, which is something that we need to find a way to paint them without doing a lot of steps. But for that, we need to find the perfect consistency on contrast paints and medium. I'm gonna try two different things as the base coat, okay? We're gonna do a pre-wash. On this one, I'm gonna use Seraphine Sepia, straight away from the pot. On this other guy, on the other hand, I'm going to use snake bite leather. And in order to make it a little bit less intense, because it has a lot of color, I'm going to use technical Lamian medium. Okay, and now we're gonna do the other one. But for that, I need to mix. Two thirds are gonna be contrast Lamian medium, and the other one third is going to be snake bite leather. Let's see how it works. You can try Agar's Dunes, you can try other contrast paints, it doesn't really matter. As long as they have a little bit somewhat yellowish tinge to the brown, I think they are gonna do their job fantastically well. This is Seraphine Sepia, and this is a snake bite leather with contrast medium. I'm gonna be honest here, I'm a little bit torn between Seraphine Sepia, which has a very subtle shading, and snake bite leather, which has more contrast. In your opinion, which one looks better? I'm going to move on to the metallic parts now and then we're going to see how to do some highlights if you want to do that. And to paint all the metals I'm going to use iron breakers or any mid-tone metallic paint will work, known oil and Nasdrake yellow. The first thing I'm going to do is paint all the metallic areas with iron breakers. Chains, weapons, jewelry, anything. Look, I know what you might be thinking. I'm using washes when I should be using like a gold paint or whatever but I'm gonna tell you something right now and I'm gonna take off my glasses this is the tits for painting metallics don't waste money in too many paints you just need these three that's it you don't need anything else if you're not doing it you're well god damn it I have to tell this every time I make a video now I'm gonna get the known oil shade all over the surface that has been painted metallic the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to wash everything with non oil all the metallic areas are going to be washed with this, which is going to help us find also the deepest recesses of those if we want to ever highlight them. And now I'm gonna use, as I said, Nasdaq Yellow to paint all the gold areas. As you can see, straight away, straight from the pot, yes, go onto the metallic area that you painted before, and bam, you're gonna get a nice gold color, just like that. I'm going to use Levidum Blue, a very dark, dark blue to paint several areas of the miniatures, including the shafts of the weapons and other areas like armor and whatnot. Well, you're gonna see it right now. Levian du Blue is a very interesting color because it almost looks like black. It's super saturated, but it still has a bluish tinge. If you water it down, it actually looks like a very dark blue, but if you paint it straight from the pot and then you do some highlights, like I'm going to show you later, it makes it look black with bluish highlights. Beautiful. And a big shout out to 3D Minis for sending me this miniature. I'm gonna leave a link below if you want to include it in your army. It is a fantastic figure and it will look great being a leader within your ranks. I just finished painting the metallics. I know I want to clean a little bit by doing some highlights with Ice Yellow. This is AK Interactive, but other brands out there have similar paints. Just find one of those 
it actually works very well for these things. What is going to happen is after I do the highlights, I'm going to use contrast paints to paint all the details and several areas are gonna pop much more because we have this highlight. It requires a little bit of skill, but it pays off in the long run. If you don't want to do this, just go straight into the painting with the contrast paints and the details. So that's the next step after this. But really, I promise you, it is worth doing this. Look, I'm not gonna be the one telling you that the wraps need highlights, but I think they actually do. You can leave them as they are with the shading that you have already achieved with the washes, but a little bit of extra highlights with eyes yellow are gonna make them look much better and they are gonna, as I usually say, pop. And the easiest and fastest way to do this is following these simple instructions. Notice how all the variables that we have here, the torso, the head, the arms and the legs, basically are more or less cylinders. And what I want you to do is follow these lines and just paint a small highlight on each one of the wrappings following those lines. You'll see what happens next. You can see here where I focus painting these small lines with eyes yellow. The front of the miniature has already all the small lines that I paint on the wrapping, whereas the one on the right is the back of the miniature and doesn't have those. I don't know about you, but I see a very big difference. And I think it's worth just doing this because it takes around 4 to 5 minutes for each miniature and you can make them look much better. Now when it comes to the rest of the details, we still are going to use eyes yellow. For instance, we're going to highlight everything that we painted with Leviton Blue with this color. And following that, we're going to glaze all that with Drakenhof Nightshade. This is going to create a smooth transition between the eyes yellow and the dark blue and it's going to make those nice beautiful highlights that you have seen in the black areas. A very nice grayish bluish highlight. But of course we haven't finished yet. There are many other things that we need to paint but we're gonna focus on those very very easily. What we're gonna use for the flesh is nothing else than Mantis Warriors Green, which is going to make it look like the original flesh that we saw on Mike McVeigh's examples. Now, there are many other things that still need to be painted, but I'm gonna tell you very, very briefly which colors I use and why. For the exposed bones and the teeth, I use Grief Charger Grey. The reason for that is that I didn't want to use a paint that will seem similar to the ones that we use for the wrapping because otherwise they wouldn't pop at all. For the eyes, I use Ethermatic Blue. I think it makes the mummies look more interesting and as if there is an unholy energy coming out of the eye sockets. And it gives them a little bit more personality than if we painted them maybe with red, which I think doesn't fit the thematic very well. And speaking of red, which is, well, one of the most fundamental 90s colors, I use Magmadroth Flame, which is oranges and I think is going to make the miniatures look era appropriate. It covers quite well without being as strident as, for instance, Blood Angels Red. And for the bling, in this case the gems, I was quite straightforward. I used Carbur Crimson for most of the mummies, but I also used a blue for the Tomb King from 3D Minutes. Looking at the pattern of this guy, I just alternated Carabur Crimson with Asomen Blue. And this is the result for that. A little white dot here and a line here for the gems and they look perfectly fine. Now of course characters with lots of things need a little bit of extra attention and that's why I painted these clothes in Terradon Turquoise. And if you really want to go that extra mile for your characters, how about giving it a few highlights with a nice gold color, such as this one. Mummies are very easy and fun to paint, and you can get them on the tabletop in no time at all, if you just follow the steps that I showed you before. If you want to see another way of painting mummies, there is a video right here, and if you haven't done it yet, consider subscribing to the channel, activate the notifications, remembering that my name is Miguel, this has been Russell Wise, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso, adios.